so we're doing a little panel, kind of continuing what my presentation was about, uh, kind of our uh, how we've built community and to see it from different uh, organizations in around the world and um, what are our struggles, what are we doing well, so we can learn from each other and uh, it'd be really great uh, to have people definitely chime in if they have anything they want to comment. Uh, so I guess we can go around and give a little uh, little line of where we're from and what we do. Uh, I'm Jillian, and I work with NYC Mesh, and I uh, work a lot on the community engagement, outreach, and education there. Very small presentations. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm Pedro from Giphy, uh, Giphy.net, and and I participate in EXO, that is a non-profit association, ISP. I am Adama. I will try to speak a little English after. <laughs> if I am stop it, you translate. So I come from Senegal. I am a member of AFCHIX. AFCHIX is a network of women in technology who consider gender diversity in the computer science and ICT industry very critical for increased creativity and innovate performance of the industry. We have had activity impacting over 25 African countries. And in Senegal, we have a chapter of AFCHIX named it, Senchix, created since in December 20. 2012. 2012. Uh, yeah. Thank you. My name is Deborah. I'm from Brazil, and I'm representing a collective called Connector. We are activists, academics, and yeah, people that live in the rural area, where we work looking first in the looking the skills and the traditional knowledge that exists in one region before implementing a community network. So we try to first look what's there, what are the things that we can use, and not only skills, but also um, the infrastructure that exists, and have, I think, uh, took me one year before I could um, apply for a grant or try to try uh, bring equipment to the community. I'm just saying to translate. Okay. <laughs> so you don't want to moderate. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, you have some questions. I was never to moderate. <laughs> um, we should do how to identify it. No. To. Mm. No. From the bitter mesh. We have this, our, our panel from yes, how the question. to organize a durable structure in the very different community networks. Can you point to that? Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, so yeah, let's uh, start off on how each of you guys design uh, your network and especially uh, with thoughts of making it sustainable. Um, what's the overall organization of your network? So. I prefer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can say I have some, yeah. something to say. Sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize I was the moderator. <laughs> For the community network, I was thinking all the constellations of actors that I had to to get involved before the deployment of it. And I noticed that there were like some, first I need academics or people with uh, technology, uh, some knowledge about the technology. And this involvement brought a lot of pressures. Like, um, like it seems that they had more knowledge when they would go and visit the community so there were also people being disappointed because they had to repeat many times uh, the meaning of a router or why what is, why what is an IP. 
So there was some conflict where I had to facilitate in this communication. Uh, so it was something that, uh, like, to, to notice the constellations that the actors that were involved and how can we make this less heavy? Mm -hmm. Because you have myself, even though I didn't have the knowledge about the community network, I, the way I dressed brings pre oppression to the community. So like you're wearing glasses or having a hair different, it's already uh, pressure. Like, so sure. the cultural press pressures that they brought to me also, like they the way they behave with women and how sh do we interact and what happens in the community when someone passed away and I had to to react in a different way as when I'm in the city. So there are the culture, the economics, the academics, mm -hmm. and the, so it's a constellations of things that I think I had to be very careful and always reflecting on what is happening. So I would go, go back home, reflect, see what are the pains that are, that occurs to me and also pay attention that there are pains also on the other side mm -hmm. and all these actors so I don't know how is it for you and uh, if you had also this yeah um, I mean definitely breaking down um, potential barriers and being aware of your own perspective and going into a situation and what people might understand from the beginning or what they might not um, and making we do try to make a lot of our decision or a lot of our content um, available through as many platforms as possible. Um, an example is when we were creating our bylaws as for the nonprofit organization, which is a requirement in order to register with the state of New York, is um, we really wanted to give people the opportunity to give community input. So we did. Um, we presented at a meeting to give them an understanding of what we were planning on doing, um, and then also created a channel on our Slack channel, had an email address where people could submit information, and so this would give people three different modes um, in order if they couldn't make the meeting, if they wanted more time to reflect on it. I know that one of our members even would meet with individuals to talk personally, so to... Um, before we go forward with any major decision um, to really get as much input from the community as possible and giving them as many ways to provide that input to us. So. Je vais parler en français, je pense que c'est mieux. En fait, je pense qu'en premier, pour construire un réseau communautaire durable, il faut connaître la communauté. Si on ne connaît pas la communauté, on ne peut pas s'imprégner de la communauté. So first, uh, the first thing needed in order to build a community network that is going to last is to know the community. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, if we, you are not uh, deeply, you have, don't have any knowledge uh, of the community, that is not going to last. Mm -hmm. uh, oui, parce que si on ne connaît pas la communauté, on ne peut pas connaître les réalités. Je prends l'exemple du Sénégal, euh, la communauté dans laquelle dans laquelle j'évolue. Euh, C'est une communauté qui est très sociable, très interactive et qui a besoin qu'on aille vers elle pour expliquer ce qui se passe. So, um, uh, I'll, take, I'll talk about the example of Senegal. Uh, the community I interact with is a community that's very sociable, uh, interacts, uh, interacts a lot. Uh, they need to be a proactive um, attitude to go towards the community in order to explain what's happening. Mm -hmm. Ensuite, il faut définir les niveaux de connaissance de chacun dans la communauté pour pouvoir compter sur des volontaires. And then you have to uh, certain the knowledge uh, how how much a person is knowledgeable in order to know uh, on whom you can rely. And Et enfin, il faudra des sessions de formation, de renforcement de capacité dans la communauté. And then you have to uh, envision some uh, training uh, for the community. Mm. And well, Deborah said that I would like to add, you know, how can we make this less heavy? Uh, I see that most of the mesh protocols that this event on 
and in the in this environment, uh, the, the protocols are somehow mature, so the ideas are already deployed, but this people still have fear. So I see this as an invisible barrier, you no? Know, like, um, and this is what is heavy, you no? Know? People still think that deploying networks is uh, difficult, but there are a lot of people that already did solutions that made it very easy. And, but is missing, as, still is missing the social part, no? So still we are like focusing on the, on the IP, on the Wi-Fi channel and so on, or still there are people that don't know how to deploy it, but it's very easy uh, to, to get started. Mm. In our particular case, um, so in my, in my zone, uh, I started a six network node, and from there I, in 2012, and in 2019, now it's 25. I'm, I'm the only maintainer, okay? And in all these years, I did that installation, no, like uh, 15. And in all that, that installations, I spent like three hours philosophically talking about what is <laughs> common network. People don't get engaged on that. Uh, I, I also have other examples for other zones of, of the same thing. Uh, probably something in Barcelona probably should switch to another city that is more engaged to, with community networks. But uh, I, I still have a hope that we can make it more attractive. I mean, for me, it's very yeah. refreshing to see you in New York, a lot of people becoming, um, to, to be passionate on that, also help it the, um, the situation of the net neutrality, mm -hmm. that this is not longer guaranteed, and then you take actions. Yeah. Yeah, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I don't really, yeah, I think like any large city, there is the desire for a community network. I don't think it any, you know, once you have a certain amount of people, you can definitely find a critical mass uh, to build a community network, but definitely the social aspect is uh, at the, ex is reliant on that organization to really push that. And I think that, I mean, we could definitely do a lot more efforts into getting those who don't have a technical background really engaged, more so than an install level. But, like, as you were saying, like, putting six nodes together and then 25, like, making those barrier or leaps into larger numbers um, is definitely uh, something that should be taught to other people on how to do that, either in a safe space uh, or, well, like a, an open educational space to learn how to do that, to how to really build their network. I do think there is a lot of fear in uh, managing that and uh, that a lot of the education and knowledge of that is uh, kind of locked off to a lot of, the, a lot of people. Even when I got involved, uh, most people, like, when people think of, like, tech education, they think of, like, the application level usually, like, oh, learning how to program, like, I'm, you know, like, a lot of, like, STEM, especially for, like, women and people of color are often just this high-level training, and we don't really know, there isn't much education on the networking level or anything below the application level, so um, I do think there could be a lot more uh efforts from organizations and I mean community networks are the best organizations to really start that push for education um, to teach people the finer details about uh, networking in order and how it works and how they can create it themselves uh, in order to break down that fear so anyone else mm. any comments I think people, huh? Can I, I will yeah. be very brief. Yeah. I, I still am not satisfied. I mean, we still, how to teach people the technical thing. 
um, and sure, so on. Sure. But but we 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 are not having the tools for the social part. So so we we have to bring with problems with the man, woman, kids, uh, old people, people with disabilities mm -hmm. for accessing spaces, and we don't have the the community tools for that. And, sure. and I'm also involved in social movements, and it's very difficult to get this kind of information. It's very difficult, for example, in this event to have a talk about explaining these tools. I, I'm not in yeah. sociology and so on, but I think we need this kind of tools. And we, probably in NetHood, you have papers that, <laughs> panels that explain <laughs> these, <laughs> these things. Uh, yeah. But, uh, we should talk more about this. I mean, sure. the IP and the Wi-Fi is not so interesting as interacting with people and making consensus and yeah. Food. I mean, and that's why that's why like at least I've made efforts to create events that are not they're you know related to nonprofits and organizations, but they really have nothing to do with networking. So they can get people engaged and learn about the mesh and then you know if they go to a grant writing meeting maybe next time they will come to networking 101 and then maybe they'll come to an install and like but getting them into the community first um sometimes and sometimes people do need a way that uh they feel comfortable in and they don't want to learn new skills right away they want to uh just apply their, their all the skills they already have um so i mean that like there are sometimes uh debates on whether or not it's the best use of our energy and time to have those kind of events but I or those kind of uh, that yeah I mean to promote those working groups for marketing and outreach um, for people to just do graphic design but I think it is because it really does start to build the community and then with that if they're already showing that they're a sustaining member in our community that they are volunteering regularly and things they like uh, I imagine that the natural progression is that they're going to want to learn more about networking and they're going to want to learn more about sustaining a network themselves and building the network. Um, but yeah, so that's just my belief. <laughs> Yay, we have questions. <laughs> no, mine is, is not, not, not much a question, but okay. I think. Comments too, cool. <laughs> so it's like this we have this. Uh, this tendency that uh, either we say, ah, uh, the technology is not important, it's the social aspect that is important, or the social aspect is not important, it's the technology <laughs> that is important. It's like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not that to say that the social aspect is important, we need to say that the technology is not, or that the technology is already there. That's not true. I mean, both social aspect and technology are not there, and, and that's the truth. I mean, it's true that the routing protocol and so on have, have stabilized, drivers stabilized, but still, in my experience where there is communities that, as communities works, and they want to have a, the network on top of the community, so the community network, the most difficult barrier for, this, for these people is the technical barrier, not, not anymore the deployment that has been made easy mm -hmm. with years of work on the technological aspect to make the deployment easy. Mm -hmm. But when something doesn't work, there is no God that, yeah. that is able to say what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the, most of the time, the, the, people, the people can just power off the antenna and hoping that when they turn off the antenna, they turn on the antenna, the antenna yeah. again, it, it works, but this is a huge technological gap yeah. that needs to be filled. So the technology, the technology is not there. Mm. So it's like because I I, I need to, to to make this sense because I always hear this, this thing. Ah, no, the, the social aspect is the most important. The technology is, is so no, it's not like that. If the social aspect is very important, mm -hmm. and mostly in my experience in Western Europe is what is what is missing the social aspect, but technology is not there either. Yeah. We and also technology is very important because we are. It's it's not that the social aspect is one thing; is the technological aspect is another. It's, they are together. Mm -hmm. okay. Very brief from my side. I can ensure that in Barcelona we dominate the technology. We dominate so much that we are thinking to go for profit. 
we are lacking so much social part that think on our, uh, the, that people are st think starting to think no, it's, they are customers. It's, it's the opposite. That's it. It's the, it's the opposite. Because the, it's the opposite. Because the people go and do it for profit because there is so high technological gap that someone can, can profit from the ignorance of the other because the other are not capable of managing their network. Because managing the network is annoying. You need specialistic formation. You need to spend your adolescence in a garage with a fucking computer and a solder. <laughs> so how, how do we teach the community to manage their own network? Like, what ways can we do that? It's, it's not just a matter of teaching. It's, it's, it's a matter also of designing the technology yeah. in a way that you don't need to spend your fucking adolescence in a garage to have the fucking idea of what's happening inside the tent. <laughs> All right, I and leave that to you. <laughs> I said I leave that to you. <laughs> no, no, but we have to stop I to see. I, it's like I'm, I'm pissed off of being at, at conference and people saying, ah, the technology is there. No, that's yeah, silly. The, the si technology isn't made to, for the layperson in mind because the only people coming to these events and the only people coming to the meetups are technological people who, you know, they look at it and they can figure it out much faster. Whereas even sometimes I look at a configuration or setting up and I'm just like, what is going on? Like, why did I have, like, where am I supposed to find this? It's not intuitive always. But so you need to have that relationship and that conversation happening. And, yeah, so bringing yeah. people into your community. I mean, we have to realize that technology is a form of power. Mm -hmm. And as Absolutely. any form of power, the people who, tend, who acquire that power have the tendency or, or relying on that power and acquiring more and the next technological design we made, we have the tendency to make it as it uh, reinforce our own power as technologists. Sure. So as technologists, we have to stop to say the technology is there because the technology is there for me that spent my fucking adolescence in a fucking garage, <laughs> for you, for him. But the technology is, is, is not there for, for, for 90 percent of the people I know. Yes, yes, I would like to say two complementary things. One is that I think it's important that we should not only talk about the network when we talk about technology. And I think we should imagine the community networks together with uh, services, software, applications, mm -hmm. and involving many people in these parts. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot teach everybody to uh, enjoy and to do the low uh, layer networking stuff, but there are people that could take care of other parts and we should see the whole community network as a holistic Absolutely. system. Yeah. And then many gender gaps, tech gaps could be solved and people would gain power by uh, being close to the technical guys, for example, because they will know them, they will trust them. They, I don't have everybody in the group to learn all the IP sure. details, but yeah. then I will know Gio, he, he will be around, we will talk, I will discuss my problems, he will understand also some things from the social part. So I think we should see it always more holistically. This is one point. And the second, I keep insisting lately that we need spaces. I mean, we need places where people go from the street and meet others. There are similar problems in food. You know, we take their food ready, cooked from the supermarket. It's like a Facebook. Uh, message uh, instead of mm. learning how to uh, plan our own food and there are some food activists that they say the fucking I don't know they have a nice <laughs> sentence like this with the fucking uh, that they don't uh, uh, know how to plant a tomato and I think we, c we should create new type of community spaces that were not in the past but we should create them where people can go and meet their network uh, manager meet their local uh, I don't know, agriculture engineer and I don't know, yeah, these two points. Yeah, I think, I don't know if I'm connecting to what you said, but I, I have the feeling like when I moved to these communities, when I was kind of trying to find what am I doing for life some years ago, five years ago, I noticed that these communities uh, in the rainforest in, in Pará, they they have the same attitude as my, grand, my, grand, my grandmother when she moved away from the forest to the capital. And she used to say that she felt like she was a wild person. People would point at her, 
and say she was too wild. And this attitude of being subaltern, of being feeling below, because they do, it's it's different things. Like when you work with someone with the same formal or education, it's different when you have like this Western formal education, and when you have people that are more into agriculture, they have a different knowledge. And so I think like this, this uh, I don't know, what, I, I had a point to connect to what you said, but now I forgot. But it's just maybe because I get too emotional about this. Uh, it's just that, yeah, like these power relations and now how they, 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 ah, okay. When you have the, like people talking and I feel like there is, some technological people, not everyone, mm -hmm. but sometimes they they have a structure of, and then I see the other side that he's so soft, and we like how can we make these people to be, I don't know how to make them, yeah, connect because it's so hard here and here mm -hmm. is so like giving gifts. If you visit them, they, you would go home full of fruits and products that they would give you. And on the other side, you have like this knowledge coming, like, okay, I know everything. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm connecting. Just to say one more sentence. Yeah. What you said and what you were saying before, that we need tools and things like that. I think it's extremely difficult to engineer this type of connections. And the most important, I go back to what I said, is to just to bring them together, you know. You put them in the same pot and you let it work yeah, yeah. without too much ambitions, too much methodologies, too much goals, but we need to meet each other. And this is why I like, I mean, I didn't talk yesterday how bad you mess, now it's a nice mix of different uh, people from different fields, and it works slowly. I mean, you don't have to overcook it. Yeah. You know, just put them in the same place and they will eat. I think there was something that I said to the to the people that I work with, and they said, I will believe that you are understanding what I'm saying when you want to go to the community willing to have a coffee or have a sai with them. You have to have this willing to be together, and if you keep struggling and like, oh, uh, I have to go to deploy or to fix the router, then it's not a community, it's just you fixing and maybe then writing a paper about it. I don't know. Very short. Mm -hmm. So, um, we are already sharing in, in this event a lot about technology. So, I cut the bug with this routine protocol and so on, but we talk a, a very few about the social problems about this panel, that's why we have this panel, no? About the social problems of engaging new people or how we can mix all together because it's sometimes it spontaneously appears in one place and I think that the responsibility of, of, the, of that event, the, the, the observers, is to say, hey, this worked very well and come to one place like this or to write an article saying, or an article on, or a Twitter message saying, this is nice, uh, you should bring uh, beers to the events because people get little bit... Uh, the nice is they talk. Or not. Or, you didn't talk about the, the importance of the meetups. No, yeah, the yeah. I mean, and that's why we have a variety of different meetups. We have ones that are really hands-on and educational-based. Um, we have some that are more just, uh, you know, passively presenting who we are. And then we also have our happy hours, which is a way that you grab a drink with someone, you meet them, you talk about networking, you might talk about Game of Thrones. Like, it can be anything, and it's a good way to kind of build that community. And also Slack, too. You start talking about different things. Not all of our channels are completely related to maintaining and building the network. It's also about building community, and um, you can talk to people who live in your neighborhood, live in your area, and... Uh, it, it gives you, I mean, I, I definitely believe, like, you know, establishing a connection um, with that people, you know, have an emotional bond 
to whatever project they're working on and their location in their neighborhood and uh, you know if you do understand that you know you're by supporting the network or um, fixing it you are just helping your neighbor get better access to the internet either because they didn't have it before they couldn't their they couldn't afford the price that it was um, it helped them like you know live in the city apply for jobs you know talk with their friends or family who might live far away like be understanding that access to the and having a network that is not watching their data and is um, actually cares about the community so um, by pushing those values uh, it we receive a lot in return so moi, je, euh, dans ma communauté, c'est très différent. Je n'ai pas besoin d'aller vers les gens aujourd'hui pour créer une communauté. On a une communauté existante. In my community, that's very different because I don't need to go towards other people to create a community. We already have a community. Aujourd'hui, vous arrivez chez moi à 2 km, 3 km. Vous demandez à Dama, on vous amène jusqu'à chez moi. Nous tous, on se connaît. If you come, if you come, in my, if you come to me, uh, uh, two, three kilometers around, you ask for Adama and they'll guide you to, to my place because <laughs> we know each other. We live together, we live together. And when I do des sessions de formation, when I have at least 100 people who come by session, who respond. When I um, give training workshops, uh, I have at least 100 people coming. Yes. The only problem I have in the community C'est qu'actuellement, les personnes de plus de 30 ans sont plus intéressées par le réseau communautaire que les jeunes. So, the only problem I have is that uh, persons over 30 years are more interested in community networks than the, the young ones. Okay. Donc, moi, je suis en train de voir comment amener les jeunes entre 17 et 30 ans à, à uh, integrate the result. And I'm looking for ways to engage the young people between th 17 and 30 years to, en to engage them with the community networks. Ça se comprend un peu parce qu'ils ont énormément de choses. Ils sont, uh, si c'est les femmes, parce que nous on est très, uh, très genre, on fait du dans le genre de sensitive. Uh, les jeunes filles de 17, 30 ans, soit il y en a qui sont à l'école, d'autres pensent déjà à se marier. Donc, so, <laughs> gère le foyer, c'est un peu difficile. So if it's girls, uh, if it's women, they, between 17 and 30, they uh, are either uh, studying or they are uh, looking forward to marry and to uh, manage their household. Mm -hmm. uh, and Pourquoi tu considères c'est plus important d'avoir les jeunes cette catégorie-là? Why do you think that uh, age, uh, this person, this, this age are important for the community? Parce qu'actuellement, euh, je travaille avec des associations de femmes où il y a des femmes de plus de 40 ans, 50 ans, 60 ans qui font dans la transformation déjà de produits. Elles so, sont because now I work with a community of uh, women that are between 40 and 50 uh, or 50 years, which work with uh, transforming products. They transform. Mm -hmm. products. Elles sont plus intéressées par comment vendre. Qu'est-ce que le, nous on peut leur offrir pour vendre leurs produits, la technologie, mais elles sont pas intéressées par um, installer eux-mêmes le réseau. And they. Uh, interest in what we can bring them to allow them to sell mm -hmm. uh, their products rather than uh, they themselves build the network. network. Et j'ai besoin uh, no, notre idée à nous c'est que le réseau communautaire soit installé, managé et géré par, par les, la communauté. So our idea is that the community network should be uh, installed, managed uh, and uh, repaired by the community itself. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, in, on my opinion, brings a, a very important question, which is why the person got engaged, get engaged, and how to make the switch that you told about, uh, Jillian, during your previous pre presentation, that you tried to switch them from being a passive client, simple client, to yeah. get engaged in the. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, the internet is one of those things that we use all the time. 
and uh, it's really easy to take for granted. Uh, and I think that's a big reason why Adama is having this issue between the 17 to 30 year old population because this is a group of people that has grown up with the internet almost their entire lives. They don't think need to think about it and they use it all the time. Uh, I think, uh, you know, emphasizing why uh, a neutral network is important, um, why that it's possible to build your own network, that it's possible to work onto the network, you know, showing these possibilities that I think many people didn't know um, that computers and networking can promise. Uh, so I think a lot of education on wireless networks usually usually sells people. I mean, most of the people, I mean, a lot of our interest was generated based on uh, the repeal of net neutrality, uh, which did bring a lot of light to the fact that uh, commercial ISPs can throttle your internet and can and are not, you know, they don't necessarily have the user's best interest, they don't have to have the user's best interest in mind. Um, and that by building your own network, you can bypass the need for also government regulation to an extent. Um, but, uh, yeah, how about you guys? Which is not, I guess New York City is kind of except not, not really, your case is probably an exception. Uh, what Zach also presented that the cable um, company, there are cable companies bankrupt, you have a kind of monopoly uh, or often in the cables and that there are no proper yeah. lines available. Yeah. Whereas I guess for Barcelona it's completely diff probably different. Yeah, they don't want to generalize ISPs entirely, but even so, and I mean, I think we all know this because we're at a mesh networking event, uh, you know, emphasizing that you can, your network can work in times of distress, either political or has a lot more, there are a lot more steps that have to be taken down in order to take down a mesh network in steps, uh, in times of like political distress or weather um, disasters. Uh, I mean, in New York, when we, mesh networks, we did have a large hurricane. Uh, in 2012 and um, that flooded a lot of the city and a lot of the internet went down and uh, some of the mesh network networks that were up were the few sustaining uh, networks that had access to the internet and, um, and then on like a political side I think a lot of people uh, around the world, uh, you know, there's a lot of turmoil politically uh, on a global scale, and uh, having some uh, control when a lot of uh, our politics are so unpredictable, uh, and I think for many don't seem to be in the best interest, or many would agree that they are not in the uh, people's best interest sometimes, uh, you know, having an understanding and knowledge to uh, even just make better policy decisions and be a more informed citizen. Um, that's going to happen if you're educated on the network, if you're educated on how to build it, if you have, if you at least have these tools and skill sets in the back of your mind. Um, I think that's very valuable um, to not just be a passive uh, consumer of uh, internet access. Does your community meet? Regularly? Yeah. One one time a week. And is is it diverse? Uh, is the people coming in from several is uh, it's not diverse, it's always the same people. Uh, no, but also diverse between them. Yeah. Men, women, technical men, technical <laughs> <Breaker. laughs> garage. <laughs> Is it advertised Never. like openly? Uh, like, do you guys post it anywhere? Or? Yeah, but the, other than IRC. The problem? <laughs> no, yeah. we don't have IRC. Uh, <laughs> not even. No, IRC. it's <laughs> it's technical, but not that much. This wall on the shelf. So, and probably is is happening also in other community networks. So you have the essential people to still run the network and you cannot do almost anything else. 
Um, and do you guys have like events open and advertised to the public? No, I mean we have these weekly meetings. Yes, but I mean, where is it advertised? Like, how are you supposed to know about it if you're not already actively looking for a wiki or um, to get involved? How would someone new or someone who doesn't know about that? Yeah, that means having a community manager. Having someone well, that is in the social networks. Kind of. I mean, we do just post ours on Meetup, and which is, at least, I don't know if it's... But we, so. we don't use Meetup. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you could use I mean, Meetup. I mean, <laughs> you want that's another kind of problem. Why I have to be in all these private networks to bring people? But because we haven't been capable to develop <laughs> we, because we haven't been capable to design and develop al attractive alternatives that works with, for the normal people, <laughs> now, <laughs> now we have to stay in these shitty places like Meetup, Facebook and whatever, because, yeah. the, because there is no real alternative. Could post flyers around. So, so the technology is still part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think really say it. Yeah. But just I mean that is it. that this can be improved <laughs> but what what that, uh, makes me crazy is that these few people that come we fail a lot. I mean we fail okay. a lot to them on a lot of invisible things that are very difficult to manage because we are start to build so another thing we, we don't talk here a lot is the hierarchy, the hierarchy no? Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when you are teaching the people the IP, the installation and so mm -hmm. on, in, in some manner you are, the, the technical guys are in a higher position than me. Sure, sure, yeah. You are teaching, you are educating that they are superior to you. Uh, if you don't work on it explicitly, saying this, are also part of our community. Yeah, I mean, I think we try to make it as accessible as possible, but I definitely understand that that um, distribution or implied distribution of power, it, or there is a distribution of power that's implied um, that can be hard to break down a bit. But uh, that's, I mean, at least definitely for installs, we have a track to make a person an install leader within three installs usually, or if they feel confident less than that, um, because, and then they are the one managing the entire installation of a node. They are uh, contacting the person who has requested it. They are organizing the materials. They are configuring the antenna. They are install. They are aligning the antenna, installing it, you know, making sure that the uh, it has a strong connection. Um, so definitely, we are trying to put them in power. And then also, you're saying though, it sounds sounds like your meetings are kind of small, and that you're not engaging all of them. And I think that's at least what I've seen. Like you're not going to engage everyone. Like uh, definitely, like we'll host meetings with. 70 attendees and really we're getting like five out of that group who's act who are actually interested in regularly um participating it so it's just yeah. kind of a numbers game by the way you you have a very high number of persons who are in new york city mesh yeah and then not so high number imported in in absolute terms in proportion I guess. Sure, yeah. Well, I mean, like, if you look at our Slack channel, there's uh, 1,700 people who are part of our Slack group, and there are, like, maybe 200 people who comment in a month or something like that, and less than that in a day. So uh, it's, you know, that's 10%. Uh, so it's a bit of a numbers game, and I think that's, good. that's any initiative, especially when you're not, you know, it's volunteer based, uh, it's people's spare time, so. Yeah, about these meetings uh, in rural, rural areas, it's, I think it's a bit difficult when you have people that works from 4 a.m. Sure. until 11 a.m. and then you have to fit your agenda and your calendar with them. 
-hmm. and usually they go to have to go to fairs so they have fairs from Wednesday to Saturday so they are available for meetings mm -hmm. on not Sunday because it's party day Monday is also day of parties or go to the church on, on Sunday so we have like we have to find schedule and agenda that can fit for people and usually it's, it's really difficult so for them when you invite them for a meeting after lunch it's like impossible no one will come it's too hot it's after they eat it's just go to the hammock and relax of course not everyone sometimes there are many people that have to work in the afternoon still from 4 a.m until 8 p.m but uh, usually they have this uh way of uh, working and it, it being a community that is peripheral from the capitalism it's like they are engaging to the capitalism so internet is also something that is putting a lot of pressure it's like tv it's like media they are just there consuming at some point they start to produce also so they are this consume producer so it's a, a I, I, yeah. So the, the 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 meetings that I have usually is at the school with the kids because they have a schedule. So it's where I can have easily. I have engagement with it's more with the kids and the 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 adults. The leaders are responsible for talking to the adults. It's more. Yeah, that's yeah. how we've been I doing. Mean, and, getting people and also, just because for them to be together, is it's really nice because they need to have a party. They need to have a, a barbecue. So when they yes. want Deborah, if you want us to come and to have a meeting, you have to offer a barbecue. <laughs> so it's always like you have to have music, you have to have beer. So it's, it's learning. Like, it's not like just having some biscuits or... No, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something else. Making meetings more fun. Yeah. Then we, we need the, this party leader and party organization. Yeah. So you're, you're really just no. looking for this one, one community manager. Why don't you just like look into the camera and just like make a call for we, we need a community manager. <laughs> um, but I mean, it really doesn't take all that much many people I don't think it takes all that many people to really manage the community network I think a lot of the engagement is even just getting people on board that this is a cool idea and this is possible in the neighborhood and that like I, is going to happen with these events and with making your documentation accessible and public and you know getting the word out and then with that People, those few people who actually want to make some sort of commitment come through. But you also have to maintain the people in the organization. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not just new people. Yeah. Um, I don't know how... Because I, I feel like we generally have a pretty good pipeline of people who want... I mean, I, I do think... I just don't entirely know what efforts you have made as an organization, and I understand that it's uh, limited, you have a limited number of people, but um, to, I kind of lost my thought, but uh, yeah, just, because uh, I, I feel like, I mean, there is definitely enough people who are interested in technology and our relationship with technology and policies of technology who are not technologists. So I, um, someone's there, I mean, either at universities, either will come to events, but I think it's definitely about getting the word out um, about the current organization, too, not just what Gleefy represents. So. You want to say something? Okay. But I want to say something. So, so for example, um, we are um, in cities where I think the the community, the social networks are somehow destroyed, and then we have these digital networks, proprietary and so on. But still, in some rural areas, they already have a community. 
a very strong community, you know? And then we have different problems. We have these problems that we were talking about, how to reach people, new members, and so on. And I think in your case of your problems is how to incorporate these technologies without breaking the community, because it's, well, it's um, the observation I had, no? That uh, Elaine, in the, in the presentation of Elaine, uh, they, uh, she's starting to do the requirements and people think that it's the network because they don't know how to interact with the network and in what hierarchy is a lane? It's in it's like us, it's on top, you know, and I'm I'm sure you are also having this kind of problems when you are trying to introduce technologies on your community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The level of the com of the uh, le niveau de connaissance de des personnes, des membres de la communauté, c'est David Bodé. Euh, c'est pas que ça, et il dit euh, que le problème c'est euh, on a des problèmes différents euh, en ville et en, mm -hmm. en la campagne. Qu'en ville c'est d'impliquer les gens et qu'en campagne c'est d'intégrer la technologie et comment la technologie se place à l'intérieur de, de hiérarchie sociale. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and the other thing is uh, in town you have more people that are available in time terms, whereas in the countryside it's usually harder. Uh, to to have that and uh, because of the what schedule uh, as mm. Chris they said uh, and whereas in what might lack in on the town side or the city side is the exactly as you said the, the connection the, the human connection and the, the community side mm. and by the way why people come to your ISP, how, how do they get in? They what are, do they care about? They are curious. They are curious. There's what these these people doing. There's lots of years doing that. Why? They are curious, and some people of this group destroy curiosity. Uh, curiosity, no, because they say, why are you here? Do you want something? You probably want the internet, right? Mm. And then, whoo, everything. It's like, it's like the quantum physics. You don't know where is the electron, but if, if you want to know, it's there. You know, so <laughs> in like this, and this person is lost. He's no more, no longer curious. Ah, okay, you are an ISP, so I pay. <laughs> Thank you for your work. Bye. That's why we're not Next an ISP. one. <laughs> <laughs> and you never tell them we are an ISP because we care about some values such as your freedom of speech, your free, your right to be informed, your right to communication, your then, right to privacy. Then this person see do two you, persons do you of the same organization I have a question. fighting. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you say in your organization you don't agree about the core values of what you are doing. You are not clear yeah. about that. Our core values are so generic because the so we keep the network free, open, and neutral. But in how we do that, we can go for profit, non-profit, etc. So we have a very we are all men, male, but with very different political orientations, uh, and so it's diversity white, white men. That's <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is that with this scenario, we can't have more. Or uh, Est-ce que votre réseau communautaire marche déjà? Does your community network uh, works already? Yeah. Yes. Uh, en fait, well. moi, est-ce que au début, avant de commencer, vous avez communiqué? Vous avez, vous avez Before communiqué. Before starting, did you communicate? Communicate about. Huh? Before started. Did you communicate before the start of the community network? Or ah, I arrived after the community. Before. I was a newcomer yeah. one day. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, arrived. Oh, okay. The, the decisions <laughs> were decided. Oh. 
but I try to influence on... Why don't you become the community organizer? <laughs> I, like, I am somehow. What are you doing here? There are some parties. <laughs> I am somehow, but, uh, uh, well, I try to, 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 to improve and I try to, to get, to understand what other people is doing and I push sure. other people to show me what are you doing because perhaps sure. it's interesting yeah. for my oh, community. Sorry. And we're happy to help, but I mean, like, I got involved because I mentioned to a guy at Mesh that a regular newsletter would be nice, and he goes, okay, make a newsletter. And so I had to make a newsletter, even though I've never made one before, and he's like, here's the access to MailChimp, this is what you do. And then he was like, make an event, and I had never really made an event, and I just did it, and I learned as I went. So, um, but yeah, I have no experience in community building or uh, marketing or outreach really uh, aside from what little I did in my own job but not not extensive and it just kind of like that's the beauty of volunteering and like working at a nonprofit is that you have that freedom to make those mistakes and kind of uh, and you might trip and fall a few times but uh, eventually like it's not it's really not too hard to work uh, once you get if you just get the hang of it and stuff and then someone will come up and be like through that it does require some effort you're going to have to throw some events you're going to have to reach out to the community and then you will find those people who want to take on some of that load parce que moi j'ai pas encore le réseau implanté mais quand tu arrives dans la communauté tout le monde parle de Velma 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 is the name c'est le nom de du réseau communautaire because i don't the community network is not started yet but when you come in the community everybody is talking about Velma Velma which is the name of the community network that's going to start parce que avant de commencer je suis allé voir les membres de la communauté les hommes forts de la communauté le maire les chefs de quartier, les chefs religieux, il y a les femmes, les associations de femmes. Because before starting, I went to talk with the people in the community. I went to the strong man, uh, mayor, uh, religious chief, uh, uh, women association. Women association. <laughs> but I think Pedro, what you said yesterday about the test, but. And to impose on us not feeling guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Should apply also to your community. First thing, it's there. Yeah. It exists. It's, it's a community failure. It's a community failure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and you could be happy that it exists and not feel guilty that it's not better. First. But we, and then. And then we, we have to, yeah, we, yeah. We need to I think we we have to be happy of what we have already. We need yeah. horizons. We, we need to to see. Okay, we are in this stage, but we can improve. Yeah. We can do yeah. things better. And it's small steps. Though. It's not going <laughs> to improve overnight. So it's it's no. yeah. It's doing that one barbecue or doing that, you know, presenting for another organization or something. It it, it can start small and what's manageable to you. Or other, if, probably other people in your group too would want to do occasional events, um, or we or think of ways to market. So, uh, I think one important thing you you, you mentioned, Jill, was the you look like you, you, you're trying to uh, create multiple communities mm -hmm. in such a way so the yes. neighborhood has. A, is organized uh, yeah. uh, and uh, it speaks to me in the fact that when we spread out, when we cover a larger area, it becomes harder to uh, aggregate uh, all person from this large area mm -hmm. and we have differences, different time schedule, different... So we might try to adapt to the local, really, uh, to, to, to the lowest and localest level. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and for instance, Connect Plus seems to me it has two big elements which are city side and countryside. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to that each one of those tries to uh, organize. Based on their own community needs. Yeah, I mean, I do think that's kind of hard when I'm responding to all of 
this comment, all the comments is, is through the lens of an urban uh, network. So yeah, community building is more abundant, but even so, uh, we do have a hard time maintaining a community because people are uh, very flaky and they come in, they go to the event, and then they never come back again. So we do definitely have our own struggles, but um, it, yeah, I, I think definitely I'm not always taking that into account. But so you you are uh, at, you didn't start no the, the, the project is to is to start at the moment no it was the moment no the project it is in cours but the the first step is the renforcement of capacity of the community so the project is started but yes. the first steps are uh, empowering the community. Because we, we, prior to deploying the network. Because, because we want the community to deploy the network. Yeah, and then I go again to the to the same problem. We understand empowering the community to understand the superiority of the technical guys or the technical staff. I mean, there's all. In all, in all this panel, we are talking about the importance of having a good barbecue, a good community manager, a good communication, a good welcoming for new members, a good person that mediates, do mediations in case of conflict, a, a good uh, code of conduct that lets you know that this person is, the, is potional, dangerous for the community, and is very nice in some of the skills, but is killing the capacity to... to There's a lot of things. Huh? No, I'm not sure that the people who are more important are more important. The two are more important for me. Because now, you are technical, but at the end you said that you have a community. A very new community. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we are talking about the technical aspect of it. Uh, Recognize that you have a failure, a community failure. So, <laughs> so to get uh, both technical and no technical people are important. Nous notre plan de formation, ce qu'on fait, on a trois niveaux de formation dans la dans la communauté. So we have a three-step program, uh, learning program in the community. A uh, une formation technique. Technical. Basique. Uh, uh, une uh, formation technique avancée tec uh, an advanced technical teacher. et une formation non technique And a non -technical mm, qui tourne comment utiliser in, uh, internet sure. comment utiliser les réseaux sociaux comment uh, mettre son, son produit vendre son produit showing how to uh, use on internet how to sell your product on the internet uh, et puis comment communiquer vendre son produit, marketing digital, communication, information, c'est des formations comme ça. And how to communicate with digital tools. Parce qu'une seule personne ne peut pas mettre en place un réseau communautaire. On a besoin d'être nombreux. Donc nous, actuellement, on a trois équipes. Une équipe technique, une équipe communication et une équipe euh, service. So we, because just a, per, a, per, a person alone cannot uh, create and deploy a community net, a network. So we have uh, three uh, teams, a uh, technical team, um, a service team, and a uh, communication team. Mm -hmm. no, just a quick, I think you talk about different yeah. things when you talk about community. I mean, there is also the community of the, those that build the community network. Mm -hmm. There's the community of those that enjoy it. I mean, you are in very different environments, so I think that It's not comparable, yeah. the, two, the two cases. Mm. And I think we should be aware when we talk about the community, what community we mean. I mean, which is the community, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so can you define the community? <laughs> so we have two definitions of community, can you help? <laughs> no, no, I think from how I know Guifi and uh, all these community networks that are in Battle of the Mess, many of the people calling them community networks, they mean the community of the engineers that build the network. 
and they are indeed a community, but it, this type of community, that it's a community of interest, we would say, in the social, sociology definition, is different from a space location-based community that involves all people that live around, for example. I mean, it's already a community of like-minded people that know what they are doing, and they build, uh, yeah. But I want to be in, on that definition. I mean, I think the community network, the, the infrastructure, the network infrastructure is the, the, the first thing to do. And after that, you start doing, building other things, like you say, to self-organize your food and so on. So I, I want to go to, to this direction. I think the problem is that uh, you have uh, strong communities. We have weak communities. So then we, ha we deal with different circumstances. Yes, then this is a structural problem between a city like Barcelona, where people uh, have friends all around the city, travel all the time, and the community where people are close and they meet each other, they know their names, they know mm. who, where Adama lives. And, I mean, mm. it's a very different environment, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that's true that you don't have these struggles with the code of conduct, the mediator. You already have all these kind of things that we don't have. You agree that we don't have this kind of <laughs> This is more comparable, Barcelona yeah, and New sure. York. You yeah. can talk between you. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I haven't a problem yeah. about this. So nice. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> just something that is changing now in my... For me, it's that I used to be a volunteer, like doing without any interest. I, of course, I had interest of learning and living that life and, and learning from them. But now that I'm have, I have a PhD, they became a friend data. I can say friend data. Mm -hmm. It's like it's, uh, and sometimes I get confused and all these things that I'm talking here. For me now, it seems that it's not talking about friends, it's also collecting and an analyzing and maybe seeing patterns. And it's weird that they, they, my meetings and invitations that I receive now are becoming interviews and people that I'm talking, they are not anymore friends, they are something else and just creating this atmosphere of academic pressure yeah. from my side, inside of me, mm -hmm. yeah. So. <laughs> Great, well it's five, so I think we should start wrapping this up. Um, does anyone else have any comments or questions or anything that popped in people's minds? Or? Mm -hmm. I think everyone is tired and I yeah. appreciate <laughs> everyone is here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.